Red Lynx have had a nigh on impossible conundrum to try and solve for well over a decade. How do you improve a game that's already been perfected? They're the masters of trials, in which you ride a motorcycle through increasingly ridiculous assault courses, battling to master the physics of bike and rider positioning, to climb up hills, arc through death-defying jumps, and much, much more. It's a series that was arguably at its zenith back on the Xbox 360, before then bringing its excellently challenging gameplay to the new generation of consoles with Trials Fusion back in 2014. But where could it go from there? Trials of the Blood Dragon clearly wasn't the answer, and from what I've seen and played of Trials Rising, it largely dodges the question. To be honest, that doesn't really matter to me, and I'm not entirely sure that it's Red Lynx's main concern either. The core gameplay is still unmistakably trials, it's still this blend of challenging, physics-based platforming that is so satisfying one moment and borders on the utterly infuriating the next. The key for Red Lynx isn't necessarily to overhaul the game and how it plays, but rather to try and further round off the edges of the difficulty curve and make it more accessible and appealing for more people. As much as I love Trials Fusion, I got stuck about halfway to two thirds of the way through and then simply never went back afterwards. It's me, the kind of player that stopped at these mid to high difficulty stages that Rising is designed to try and keep playing. The key to that is in teaching the players to better themselves, and it's somewhere where Trials has stumbled in the past. The games have had tutorials in the past, but those in Fusion were as cold as the robotic voice that introduced them and did little to actually ease you into a new technique. Here there is a much friendlier face lent to proceedings by Professor Fat Shady. yes it's a terrible name but don't worry about that, and his tutoring through the University of Trials. It starts with a slightly bumpy trail that is designed to teach basic throttle control before the humps get larger and larger over a few successive attempts to show positioning the rider up the hill and how rotating the bike through jumps can affect your progress. They're simple but effective. I, for example, completely sucked at the simplest looking tutorial but already had a good grasp of the fundamentals for the latest ones, which actually kind of surprised me at how that worked out. The career is now spread out across a world map, with the earliest of the trials to take on set in the US of A before heading out across the Atlantic to Europe and beyond for much more challenging escapades. It's a fair bit more grounded in reality than either a Fusion or Blood Dragon were, and that's ably demonstrated by the way that there are head-to-head -head knockout stadium races that break things up. But don't worry, there is still plenty of the ridiculous in this game as well. One of the more difficult levels that I tried featured hoops that, if you jump through them, would give you a temporary rocket boost, and learning to manage the boost with the positioning of your bike was a sudden but fun surprise to try and overcome. Some of the most fun that I've had in Trials comes from trying to beat other players though. Whether you're racing against other people's records or heading into the online multiplayer, they are now represented by ghosts as opposed to simple markers. And while it sounds simple, it makes for a great change so you can better see how someone else is tackling the course and potentially learn from them, or simply see better where your opponents are. But Trials just wouldn't be Trials without a certain flamboyancy and stupid flair to it all. The player customization options go deeper than ever before, from ridiculous disco trousers and shiny tracksuits to being able to wear a tiny hat on top of another hat. You must always have some form of headgear on, just purely for safety, so surely having double hats would be extra safe. There's also plenty of bike customization, which you did have in previous games, and while the built-in track editor is essentially the same as can be found in Fusion, it's now got three distinct eras of assets for you to draw upon, going all the way back to Trials Evolution. Red Links are also going to try and do a much better job of curating these levels and exposing them to different players. One great new addition is that of the tandem bike though, which can be used on most but not all courses and trials in the career. It is exactly what it says on the tin, it's a bike for two people, and a fun way to introduce co-op into the game. Now you're both contributing to the physics of the bike and balancing it with your individual riders, as well as having your own throttles. Talking to your co-op partner is key to coordinate what you're doing, but if you feel like it, you can always just eject and leave them struggling with half the power to try and finish the level. With the game coming to Nintendo Switch, this mode in particular feels like a pretty obvious play for how you can hand a Joy-Con to a friend, but then there's the head-to-head -head local play as well, and all of this is available on all of the systems. 
Local multiplayer is pretty much as you'd expect it, with the winner determined by resets and time across a few different rounds, but there's the fun little twist of being able to put down a wager. These, as suggested by the game, include things like getting to draw a moustache on the loser, deciding who has to walk the dog, do the dishes, the cooking, and there's dozens of other examples. Trials Rising is, well, it's just more of Trials. Half a decade on from the last game, and yes, I am completely pretending that Blood Dragon did not happen, Trials Rising doesn't really need to reinvent the wheel. So it doesn't. It's just a new entry in the series that continues to polish and refine that core gameplay, and in my opinion, five years later, that is more than welcome. Thanks as ever for checking out our videos, I hope you've enjoyed this and found this a bit informative. You can also head over to the sixthaxis.com where we've got this written preview. We're finally getting back into the groove of things with 2019 and we'll have a good few videos coming up over the next weeks and months. So if you want to be here for all of that, make sure that you subscribe and hopefully we will see you again soon. Goodbye!